My name is Susan Nicastro. I represent Ward 4 on the Brockton City Council. And this is my show, Facts on 4. And I, I welcome you today. I haven't done this show in a while. This is my virtual Zoom version of the show. I'm recording it from my dining room table. So I'd like to update you today on a few matters that affect Ward 4 as well as the city of Brockton. And the first thing is, what have we been doing in the city council? The city council hasn't met in our city council chambers, city hall, since early March. We've been having virtual meetings through Zoom like I'm recording today. And I have to say there are a lot of moving parts to these virtual meetings and I have to applaud our city council president, Shirley Asak, as well as Brockton Cable Access's Michael Simmons for making these meetings happen through Zoom and then getting them onto uh, the cable television station as well as our YouTube Brockton channels. There are a lot of moving parts and they've been doing a great job. Um, most recently, we've been taking in funds that, that the city applies for various departments um, and allocating, the, approving, taking them in and allocating them to the departments that will best use them. We, we did have one controversial issue recently. We, last Monday, we passed an ordinance that will increase the water rates, the sewer rates, and also create user fees on each of those accounts. And um, it was a rather controversial issue. It passed by a vote of eight to three. I was one of the three people voting against it. I, I initially, I, I supported this when I first heard about it in the fall. Um, I was told that the money would go toward infrastructure, certainly repairing our pipes um, and the roads as well. Um, as many of you know, we had a major water main break on the east side in the winter and we, we had people without water for three days and it was terrible. And so I, I was all for it to address problems and shortcomings like that, but then the pandemic hit. And I know personally so many people who are affected by COVID-19, um, businesses that aren't, aren't open because of COVID-19. And so I decided that while this was a worthwhile thing to do, it was the wrong time to do it. And I voted against it. That's the one big thing that we've done recently at the city council. Now, the, the city's boards and commissions have not been meeting. They haven't met since I believe early March. Uh, but they, we expect them to resume in June. And at that time, there will be some word for matters on various agendas that I just wanna make you aware of. Um, and you can check this as well. You can go on the city of Brockton's website, which is brockton.ma.us. In the upper right-hand corner of the opening page, there's a drop-down menu. So you click on it and it will drop down. And then you'll click on the word government, and then again, it drops down some more and you'll click on meeting agendas. And there you'll see the agendas for these board and commission meetings as well as for the city council and the school committee. And I checked it today before we started recording this, this show. And in June, the planning board is going to be meeting on June 2nd, which is a Tuesday. At 6 p.m., they meet in the GAR room, which is on the second floor of City Hall. Now, I'm not sure if the meeting is going to be open for the public to gather. I believe Governor Baker's latest order says that even after we start having meetings and opening businesses slowly um, to get back to something closer to business as usual, that we may not always be gathering in rooms of more than 10 people. So I'm not sure how these meetings will be handled and, not, and if you're interested in any of them, I urge you to check the website to find out. Uh, how, if they're not opening the meeting to the public, how, if you wish to weigh in, you would do so. And of course, you'd have to take care of it prior to the meeting taking place. So in any event, the planning board is going to meet on Tuesday, June 2nd at 6 p.m. And it hasn't met since March 3rd due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The agenda for this June 2nd meeting includes a word for matter. A definitive subdivision is up for approval at 678 East Street. And those of you who live on East Street and the roads around it are familiar with this. 
This is a, a, a subdivision, it's a road that leads into the former Knights of Columbus um, social building or so, social club. Um, most of the subdivision is supposed to be located in West, in East Bridgewater, but there will be a few lots in Brockton. Okay, so I wanted to make my Ward 4 residents aware of that. Now the Zoning Board of Appeals hasn't met since March as well. Its June meeting isn't yet scheduled according to the city's website. However, they meet on the second Tuesday of each month. So I suspect they will be meeting on Tuesday, June 10th. And that would be at 6 p.m. in city council chambers. Uh, their April agenda, which is what they'll be hearing in June, included a request for a variance to build a single family four bedroom home. And that would be at 11 Wilbur Avenue, which is located in Ward 4. Um, I believe it's on roads that lead to Thatcher Streets or side streets from Thatcher Street, okay? The, the Conservation Commission um, hasn't met since March as well. And it has two meetings scheduled in the month of June, on June 17th and on June 24th. And each of those meetings will be held at 6 p.m. in the GAR room. On June 17th, um, there is one Ward 4 matter. There's a notice of intent to build an addition onto a business property that's located at 56 Oak Hill Way in Ward 4. At the June 24th meeting, they will hear a request for determination um, at 53 Baker Street, and that's with intent to build a single family residence. So if you're interested in any of those things, get in touch with me. My office number is 508-897-1314, and I can get you more information. Okay, over the summer, over July and August, I expect an application for site plan review to be, to be heard by the planning board. I'm not sure when yet, it's not scheduled, but it will be on the 40R project that is proposed for the convent grounds at 233 Thatcher Street. Now this has been, th this has been a controversial project. And so I want to reassure residents and neighbors in that area that I will host a public meeting for interested people before that, that hearing takes place. I don't know when the hearing is going to be, so I don't know when the meeting will be, but I will be in touch probably by mail as well as um, on, on this channel and uh, on email to let people know, okay? Uh, secondly, I wanted to make people aware that there's a new business operating. It's accessed through Ward 4. It's, at the, it's on land at the end of Oak Hill Way. It's a, a composting business. It's being operated by EOMS Recycling. Um, it's operated on land that's in West Bridgewater, but of course, uh, across the train tracks, it abuts the, the, tra the commuter rail tracks. Across the train tracks is land in Brockton. And some of our neighbors who live on the other side of the train tracks have been experiencing some uh, odor problems coming from the compost. And the owner of the business has reassured me that he's trying very hard to figure out how often he has to turn the compost to diminish any odors that might be coming from it. But if you do have an issue with it, call me, 508-897-1314, um, and I will be in touch with the owner, okay? Those are some Ward 4 matters that we'll be seeing in June. Um, now, let's, let's talk briefly about COVID-19, because we all know that it, it has affected the city of Brockton, its residents, its businesses hard hard, we've been hit hard by it. Um, unfortunately, our number of residents testing positive and the deaths of some of those residents um, are much higher than in all but two Massachusetts communities. And we're trying to figure out why that is to prevent this from happening in the future and also to, to uh, reduce the number of cases that we have now. The good news is that anyone can can be tested for this at a test site that was created on the grounds of Brockton High, I'm sorry, Brockton High School. It's on a white tent at Brockton High School in the parking lot. And they're, they're open for testing on Monday through Friday from nine in the morning until four in the afternoon. And it's free of charge. If you do have insurance, they'll ask for your insurance 
information and bill the insurance company. But if you don't have insurance or the ability to pay for it, it's free. So all you have to do to get this test is call beforehand and register. And the number to register is 844-483-7819. And I'm going to ask Rockton Community Access to put that number up on the screen as I'm saying this so that you will be able to, to write it down. Okay? Do go and get tested if you have any concerns about COVID-19. And, and encourage your family members and friends to do it as well. Okay, so what else are we doing about COVID-19 in the city of Brockton? We're doing plenty. You might not hear about it, but I can honestly tell you that the hardest working person in Brockton right now is our new mayor, Robert Sullivan. He is constantly in these virtual meetings with all kinds of folks talking about COVID-19, the impacts on our city, the impacts on other communities and what mayors and the governor, the city of Boston's mayor are doing about it, what's available for Brockton to do about it. Mayor Sullivan is working so hard and that's not just by my word, that's by the work of other city officials who are working alongside him to address this problem. Um, a number of people encouraged by Mayor Sullivan have come together to create what's called the Broughton Health Equity Task Force. And I'm honored to be a member of this task force. Its mission is, and I'm sorry, my old eyes need glasses to read this. The Broughton Health Equity Task Force was created to identify multifactorial health disparities in the city of Broughton. Through the collaboration of community partners, the task force will propose and implement solutions, advocate for vulnerable populations, influence public policy, and educate and empower citizens through a culturally tailored lens aimed at improving the health and well being of the community. Well, who's on this task force? There are some elected officials, there are some appointed officials of the city, including the interim executive director of the Board of Health, a Board of Health nurse. The mayor is on this task force. His director of constituent services serves on it. Um, there are sharp and interested people from um, BIC, from Coalition for Social Justice, from the, um, the Cape Verdean Association, the Haitian Association, um, we have a group of incredibly talented and caring people working on this. Already, they've written a letter to Governor Baker with Mayor Sullivan that supports legislation that's pending at the State House, um, which addresses collecting data and treatment disparities for underserved or underrepresented communities, a very important thing for Brockton. They've also created three subcommittees that are identifying both short-term and long-term goals. That's what we're working on right now. I expect these goals to be identified and carved in stone so that we can all get working on them um, by next week. Um, the subcommittee that I'm working on has important goals, short-term goals, like um, uh, translating materials that explain good hygiene and some things about the symptoms of the virus and uh, places where people suffering from it can get food, can find shelter in some instances, um, can get financial help. Um, it's, it's going to be great. We just have to finish getting it up and running. And I have no doubt that many people from, will benefit from the hard work of this task force. So I wanna make you aware of that. Now, let's see. Um, further on, what we've realized in Massachusetts and probably across the country is that some of the uneven um, distribution of this virus has to do with disparities that were already existing and this virus is just making them that much worse. And so long-term goals of this task force and I hope of other communities around the country and the state, is to address those disparities, to help 
underprivileged people, to help people who, through no fault of their own, are feeling the scourge of COVID-19 or, or have, have less or need more um, to get the help that they need. Okay, so I have, I have great hopes for the work of this task force. And, and the uh, big hearted people who are serving on it. And I should say, I believe the city of Brockton is full of big hearted people, generous people who care about their neighbors and, and, and the community in a very deep way. And I have, I have a simple example of that, that, that it was experienced by my family a few years ago. A few years ago, over the summer when my sons were younger, um, my my young my older son Edward decided to have to satisfy a service requirement by having a project of collecting foods that children like to eat for one of the local food pantries that's close to my heart to give away. And so this this was a project that benefited our family and Edward in on many different levels. For example, not only did Edward had to collect the food, he was a little shy at that time and he had to reach out to the Council on Aging Directors. He decided to, to uh, distribute bins for collecting food and materials about his project to the Councils on Aging in Brockton and in several other towns that abut Brockton. So he had to kind of get past his shyness and contact the Council on Aging Directors, go in to meet them, explain his project and, and ask them to help him. And then he had to uh, decorate his bins and bring them in and speak to some of the people in each of the councils. And then he had to go back every week to collect the food and check it over to make sure it was suitable and also that it hadn't expired and then deliver it to the, the food pantry which was always very happy to get it. Well, every Council on Aging contributed. I, I could never say they didn't. But we would, we would visit the suburban Councils on Aging first, and Edward would gather the food into the car. And then we would always go to the Brockton Council last because then we would, we would go to the Y and have a swim, or we would go to the library and borrow a book. And every week, every time, Edward went to the Council on Aging in Brockton. The bin was full. Some weeks there was also excess food on the floor next to the bin. The hearts of the people there, the city, city residents, were just so, so big and so generous. And um, I've never forgotten that. And, and it's a wonderful reflection on the city of Brockton and our residents. We were always so grateful for those contributions to feed kids over, over a long summer. Um, that's what we're seeing with COVID-19. We're seeing so many people, again, contributing food and laundry products and giving people rides to doctor's appointments and so many other things that are helping our residents. And, and uh, I just want to say thank you for it. Um, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so proud of Brockton and how we are handling all of this. We truly will get a handle on COVID-19 and we will conquer it because that's what we do in Brockton. We're, we're fighters, we're tough, and I'm, I, I'm proud of that. So that's what I have for you, this, this edition of Facts on Four. If you have questions or comments, get in touch with me. I'm Susan Nicastro, the Ward 4 City Councilor. My phone number is 508-897-1314. Thank you for listening. Best of luck, best wishes to you. Please stay healthy. Bye.